Hi everybody, it's David Fleming here from the Toronto Realty Group and welcome back to Pick 5. Now before we get started today, I want to let you know that we have long last, I believe, uh, finally released our podcast and we are calling it The Last Honest Realtor. Yeah, I think that's kind of cool because it speaks to what I want to do, which is continue to tell the truth that no one else wants to tell, to tell the stories no one else will tell, to give people the background, the sort of pull back the curtains, behind the scenes look, the in the trenches stuff that I've been doing on Toronto Realty Blog since 2007, but of course in a podcast format, which will also be on YouTube. So if you saw the title today, you know that we're going back to the well, to Ronsi's. If I was to guess which areas I've featured the most in Pick 5 since, oh my God, I want to say I started this feature in 2013. Probably top five would be Ronsi's. Now here's why. So Chris and I went the other day to see a client's place in, of course, Ronsi's. Um, I'll speak a little more generically to protect their anonymity, but these are folks that are probably going to be selling in the next month. And driving it off Parkside Drive, right, High Park right across the street, the cherry blossoms, it was like out of a movie, they're fluttering as we pull into the street. And I was just enamored. I really was. <clears throat> and again, I live in Bennington. I live in the Midtown area. I've lived in a lot of different places in Toronto. I've never lived in Ronsi's in a different life, different place. Maybe I would. There's a lot of places I would like to live. But what I really like about this area is that most of these houses are Edwardian or Victorian. They're from the late 1800s or early 1900s. And this house was so beautiful. You talk about curb appeal. Curb appeal is not a myth. Curb appeal is real for most folks, I would think. Beautiful brick, three-story Edwardian, absolutely gorgeous. I love the bay uh, window at the front. I love the, I'm trying to speak from an architectural standpoint, I'm not doing well. I love the things and the angles and the jimmy jammies. I need to take a course in architecture. My point is, I love the way that this house looks. I could describe it to you if I was standing out in front of it. Now, not so much. So I figured, what the heck? Let's do Ronsi's in this week's pick five. And let's pay special attention. We'll go to my uh, map here, okay? So let's pay special attention to the years that these houses were built. So zoom into my screen here. Let's take a look, guys. Ronsi's. You can see here that Google is telling us Parkdale. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Parkdale to me is more in and around here. Parkdale is maybe south of Queen, but not too long ago, I was driving south of Queen doing a video or taking photos. I would say not too long ago. This is probably seven or eight years ago. Um, and some guy was like, hey, what are you doing? Like I'm casing the joint, right? And um, I said, yeah, listen, I'm just, you know, in the area. Uh, doing a video on how the area has changed and I chatted with this guy and he told me that him and his wife bought this place and it was on one of these streets like a BD or a Dowling let's say him and his wife bought this place and they said we knew that a couple years earlier there was literally like a crack house down the street but they bought this place years and years ago because they said this area is going to be up and coming and here we were this is six or seven years ago and he had been there for seven or eight years so do the math there they've been there a long time but even how that area has changed is incredible. So we're gonna be looking more in Ronsi's proper. The house I was talking about that Chris and I went to was sort of in this section here between Parkside and Ronsi's. Today we've only got one house that's between Parkside and Ronsi's. We're gonna be looking at three houses between Ronsi's and Lansdowne, uh, actually four as you get over here to McDonnell. So we'll look at our first house here and I wanna go right to the picture. I wanna to go to this picture and see this. This is a Victorian. What year was this built? Okay, you're going to guess for me. What year was this built? So Victorian area, I'd say the earliest house I've seen in Toronto was probably 1888. So somewhere between 1888 and 1920, let's say, this one was built in 1920. 08. 1908. Okay, so what do we have? We have entry level, a million three ninety nine. It's a three bed, two bath. It's on a sixteen by one twenty five. It has parking. It's got a finished basement. This is a plus all the way, and I haven't even been in the house yet. Okay, let's take a look. So, first photo we see is one of these artistic type shots. We've got our staging art books, we've got our fuzzy wuzzy chair, and we've got some mid-century modern furniture. This is kind of the look that you're going for in one of these houses, right? It's very small furniture. These rooms are not huge. They're more traditional in nature. You've got more freestanding walls in here unless it's new and you've opened it all up, right? Again, mid-century modern furniture, right? We have, of course, new flooring, but this is original here right and then you'll get into right 
an enclosed kitchen. Not everyone wants to have this big open concept main floor. And in traditional Ronsi's house, originally, yes, these rooms were separated by walls and this is certainly no different. But you have a big living, you have a big dining. I just said it wasn't huge, but you get my drift. It's bigger than the condo you're moving from. Kitchen, I don't love the carpet in here, but it is what it is. Okay, it's decently updated and you've got a little mud room off the back. Another artistic shot. Okay, so there's your mudroom off the back. So personally, I always think rooms like this are important because I don't want to typecast and say everyone has kids or everyone's having kids. But when you walk into an original eight, uh, 1908 house, in 1908, everyone had one pair of trousers, right? So you walk in, there's no closet, hello. So when you have kids or when you have golf clubs or rollerblades or bikes or whatever it is, all the stuff and all the crap, it's nice to have this little mudroom. The assumption here is you're parking off the lane, you're walking in, back every night. So they've staged it with this little desk. You know, to me, this is a mudroom, right? This is where you're putting all your kids' crap and all of your crap. So upstairs, principal bedroom, right? I love this bay window here. And then decent enough size, right? Second bedroom, fits a bed, that's about it. And again, going back to this is entry level, but also this is a Victorian, and you're not gonna have huge bedrooms. This is just, you know, built 125 years ago. Not 125, 116, I can do math. So downstairs, basement's decent, right? You see this load-bearing pillar here, you see this ductwork running across. You're not gonna be able to get rid of those unless you dig this thing out, put new beams in. This is fine for Ronsi's basement. So I think this is a great house. I don't know how we're gonna get another 15 photos out of this. Full laundry, okay. What else we got? Front porch, some flowers. Is this Avril's listing? I think it is. Great garage. I mean, you don't buy a house for the garage, but that's a pretty sexy garage. Nice backyard. So to me, this is a box checker for sure. Wow, that's a serious garage. This has absolutely everything that you could want in an entry level Ronsi's home. So no, it's not detached and no, it doesn't have a master ensuite and it doesn't have a powder room on the main floor, but it basically has everything that you could want in a Ronsi starter home. And it's perfectly situated between Sororan and Ronsi's. So it's not too close to Ronsi's, right? But it's not over towards, right? Lands down over here where prices drop and it's a little less desirable. So to me, this is absolutely A plus real estate. These guys, I looked this up. Here's another thing. A lot of these folks have owned a long time. I don't know what that says about the area, but these folks have owned since 2002. So the next house, okay, let's go right to the photo. See this one here. What year was this built? Okay, so you're probably guessing earlier than the last one, which is 1908, so you're right. You're probably thinking pre-1900, so you're right. This was built in 1890. So 125 Mactanel. So this is listed for $2 million, 36 days in the market. There's a reason I'm going there. Four bed, plus one, three bath, lot size, blah, blah, blah. I'm blah, blah, blahing for a reason. I wanna show you the listing history and this is going to tell us a lot about this property. This listing has been listed, this property has been listed 12 times since 2021. Started out for lease, put it up for 2.4, 2.1, 2.069, another couple times for lease, million eight ninety nine. Million seven ninety nine, two million one hundred fifty, and now one nine nine five. So why would a property be listed so many times? And here's the rub: this house is exceptionally loved, cared for. It's unique. It's someone's home. It's not just a house. Now this person has been here since nineteen eighty seven, and I would say that the style is not for everybody. But it seems like an odd reason to not buy a house, the stuff and things inside. Someone on my team earlier called it Harry Potter-esque. Can't take credit for that one. But this house, if I look at it and I say, I love these moldings here, right? I love the original features, the original fireplace. Take the person's stuff out of it and it's gonna look a lot better. Original stained glass fireplace someone built that by hand 130 years ago but yeah it just has a lot of really unique furniture in it so there's no crazy town stuff here like this is a totally serviceable kitchen maybe you don't like the this literally looks like a jigsaw puzzle i did during the pandemic honestly but yeah i mean maybe you don't like the you know granite countertops which look kind of circa 2000 you would want different window coverings but i feel like this one's 
you know, got a stigma about it now. And it's a shame because it's a beautiful 1890s house. And yes, it's on McDonnell, which is not the best street. But if you took all the stuff and things out of here, I think it would show a lot better. That's tough, right? Someone's obviously been here since I was in grade two. So suffice it to say, they're probably not in a rush or don't feel like they need to make their house look more appealing to you know random people that are passing through. So it is a big house, as I mentioned, four bed, plus one in the basement, three bath. This is the top level, and you don't get this kind of character, right, on a third level in most houses. Full three story, and like there's some cool pieces, right? The ladder, the chest, right? Look at all this. This is super, super cool. It just has been on the market so long, I think it's stigmatized. And like, this is a piece people aren't gonna like, and this toilet people aren't gonna like, and hardwood floor and a bathroom's a bit weird, and I get all that, right? But this feature here, this thing, you're not gonna get in a new house. You're not gonna get, everything's totally squared up, it's easier to make. People back then, in 1890, spent a heck of a lot more time. Look at this, this is so cool. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame that this isn't more loved by the market, but again, it is what it is. I would have a hard time, if I'm being honest, if I walked in here, we have a certain brand, a certain aesthetic, and a certain way of doing things. And if I walked in here, I would not know what to do because we try to make every property look the same, not because it's boring, but because we have a way of selling real estate and it works, right? So here's the basement. And they had a plus one, maybe that was upstairs. No, maybe they're calling this the plus one. Yes, yeah, so you've got the drop ceiling. And you've got kind of a cheap laminate flooring, but that's okay. Then you've got a lot of wood paneling, another kind of awkward bathroom, right, with really dated finishes. So yes, yeah, somebody could buy this and spend a ton of money to renovate it. Um, that's a weird shot with the mannequin situation there. I think we'll end on that one. And then again, the fact that there's snow in the backyard. If you're listing a property in May and you've got photos of snow in the backyard, you're basically telling the market, hey, this thing's not selling, this thing hasn't sold, check the listing history, because they're up for $2 million and you know it's just not moving. But kudos to the agent, I think this is uh, same agent for 12 listings. Okay, uh, so let's go to 116 at Grenadier. So when you hear Grenadier, you're gonna know that it is over, right, between Parkside and Rotsy. So this is the one, well, I mean, actually Grenadier does go over here. I was thinking Grenadier Pond. Um, so good location here. This one's a really unique look to it. So check this out. It's a semi, but it is a super, super wide semi. And this looks more like an Edwardian to me, Edwardian era, except that it was built in 1910, which I believe is still Victorian era. So we'll come back to that. But super wide lot. Right, so 24.65, that's very wide for a semi, 116 feet deep, so five bed, three bath. These houses are massive. The house Chris and I went to see the other day, that was a three story, a full three story, and the top floor was awesome. Um, so again, main floor family room, finished basement, lane parking, let's take a look inside. Very, very traditional, okay. This wooden staircase, all of these wooden finishes, these are all 1910. And my favorite part about this is the fireplace. You have a fireplace in the foyer. So picture in 1910, you get home after a long day of work, you get off your horse, uh, not metaphorically, get off your high horse. No, you get off your normal size horse because it's 1910. The first thing you do is light the log in the fireplace because that's how you heat your home. Just think of that. Think of how spoiled my children are, uh, or your children, or you, but mainly my children. No, seriously, think about what it's like. My kids literally are driving in the back and my boy, I'm hot. Sure, I could do something about that if you'd like. Boy, imagine 1910 coming home and putting a log in the fire in the foyer of your home on Grenadier. That's what I like about this house. So then you've got another fireplace in the living room. Again, these aren't all working, but these are original. And you start to see a lot of this original character and charm, which I think is so neat. Check this out. It's actually illegal to paint those in the city of Toronto. Um, it's not, it's my joke, I'm just saying. So you've got beautiful original French doors, all the hardware is original too. And then again, you get in the kitchen. Okay, some people don't like it because it's a galley. We have more black granite. You can rental this, it's fine, but if you're looking for a Ronsi's home and you're looking for traditional character and charm, this is what you're going to get. Redo the kitchen, it's fine, right? Here's a little extension off the back. Okay, got a little desk back there. Maybe it's not an extension, to be honest, because this here, that definitely, that hardware looks original. So then upstairs, here's where you start to really see how this is vertical living. Three stories, this is five beds, three baths, as mentioned, right? 
So this is an add-on for sure, because that's the original exterior brick. I don't really know what you do with those spaces. And then another fireplace. Imagine like, you know, Billy, every kid was named Billy in 1910. You're cold in the middle of the night, like my son. I'm hot, I'm cold. Imagine being four years old and you're a little chilly and you, you know, get out like a flint and start chipping away at it to try to light a log on fire. Yeah. So here you've got your glass block. That's very 1980s. And upstairs, top floor, right? Original pine floor. So some people are looking at this. They're like, yeah, cool. Not for me. I don't like radiant heat. I want four star gas. I want all of the new finishes. Why are we looking at stuff that's 130 years old? Well, because it's charming. It's funny though, because uh, I hate streetcars. I think they're completely, totally useless and inefficient. And the argument people always say, you know, in favor of them, they're so charming. Really? They completely congest the downtown core. We could have buses that could be in the left lane and then pull into the right lane so traffic could go around, but we have streetcars because they're charming. Anyways, back to this house, which is super charming. That is the reason that we like it. We certainly did not have this in 1910. What would we do then? We would just go outside and run. That's right. It's awful, awful to hear that. So we got a bit of a checkerboard finish on the floor down here. And again, you start to see that it's a bit dated. Ronsi's backyards are always gonna be snug like this, all right? But this is a really, really cool house. Yeah, good drone shot. We bought a drone. <laughs> Sounds like we had a child. Yeah, we bought a drone. It's kind of neat. I don't know how to use it. I'm not allowed to use it. Um, so here we go. So Grenadier, thank you for putting this image in here in case I didn't know how to use Google Maps. Um, and there's a shot of the city of Toronto. whoop de doo Okay, so there you go. So again, did I show you this on the map? Yes, I did. It is very, very close to Ronsi's. Is it too close? I don't think so, right? This is Ronsi's. And then you've got this is a laneway or a street? I can't remember this one down here. So yeah, we're far enough away that we're not right next to whatever restaurant happens to be there. Um, but this one, you know, needs a bit of TLC. Two days in the market just came out and I believe they have an offer date. Yeah, May 28th. So two million with an offer date. This is pretty good, pretty good for the one Chris and I have coming out, I think. Okay, so next one here is 154 Galley. So this one is a bit more renovated. I wanna go to the listing history here um, because this one was up, if I'm not mistaken, yeah. So they paid a million 650. This is, this is interesting, let's go back. 2015 it trades for a million two. 2017 it trades for a million 470. 2019 it trades for a million 650. So the first three houses that we did, Fermanagh, they've been there since 2002. MacDonald, they've been there since 1987. Grenadier, the one we just did, they've been there since 1998. And now this one has traded in 2015, 2017, 2019. And now this is the third listing on the market in 2024. So you can see here, they listed at 1999 with an offer date, didn't get what they wanted, terminated and relisted for 225. Now they're like, okay, well, we've been on the market a month. Let's put it back out at a reduced price of 2.1. And we're seeing a lot of this. So the house itself, very pretty house. Detached, Victorian era, this one built in 1910. And inside, definitely more renovated. So are you losing the original character and charm of the house? I think some people want the character and charm on the outside. And some people say, you know what? Enough is enough inside. I mean, maybe this is original here, but I don't need all those old rads. Thank you, David. I thought they were ugly. I don't like that old lady's toilet seat. That old lady's old toilet seat. Someone's really honking. There's ducks outside. Yeah, at our office, we have a lot of loons. I don't know what's happening. I think there's ducks in the middle of the road. So yes, back to planet Earth here. What I like about this, big open concept kitchen. And the first house on Fermanagh, I had said to you guys, this is a classic, original, traditional, small, entry level semi. This is next level. This is bigger price. This is bigger house. This is detached. And now we get into this more modern look. But again, this furniture, right? Mid-century modern. I think I've said that 10 times so far today while still keeping some of the original ceiling. Really nice. So get into the living room. And again, you can see that this was probably an original fireplace. Not anymore. It's gas or it's electric. And then they've done this new effect over top. Same, 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 same throughout. So definitely a reno, definitely keeping very little of that original house. Um, same thing, these floors, not original. I often look at a room like this in Ronsi's and I think this was probably two rooms when this house was built. Uh, but now, of course, it's a beautiful, spacious primary bedroom with huge closets. Very, very nicely done. Yeah, this thing is knockout. 
Went a little off the beaten path here with the floor and the tile. Okay, fine, what do I know, right? I'm actually asking, what do I know? I don't know much about design. I have GI Joes, that's art to me. Um, so we'll come back to, see this here, right? We'll come back to exactly what this is in a moment. Um, and here's up top, right? You usually have a Jack and Jill bedroom on the top floor. So there you go. Right, basement apartment, no one wants. I mean, I don't know. I guess like if you're gonna drop two and a half million, do you really need the 1400 a month that comes from the basement apartment? Maybe it's an in-law suite, but I've, I've always felt awkward about these like basement apartments when people are buying houses at this level. Um, so again, I mentioned the building situated, right? Right here. So the problem, let's do this. Let's go 154 Galley Avenue and I'm gonna show you, yes, I meant 154 Galley. What did I say? Thank you, Google, for reading my mind. Um, so again, the problem with this, of course, going this way, is that we're super, super close to Ronsi's. So where's 154? Is it the first one in? Is it the second one in? Let's take a look. Okay, that's 155. So on the other side of the street, this here is 154. And this here is Ronsi's. So it's an apartment building, it's not the end of the world. But if I could go back, guys, just for one second to show you, right, what this was looking out at. Again, not the end of the world, but you are super, super close to Ronsi's. So I think a lot of people are saying, you know what, pick this house up, put it eight houses in, and I'm interested. Um, yeah, uh, this is now, check this out, okay, offers any time, as mentioned, 2.1, this is repetitive, and I apologize, but the third listing that we've got here, right? Because this was on the market for 199, 225, 21, and it's traded in 2015, 2017, 2019. Okay, so I really, really like that one. The last one here we're gonna look at is 195 right. So interesting because we have 2.1 million for a detached two and a half story that's sitting, and now we have 2.2 million for a semi-detached two and a half story that's sitting, right? So listing history of this one, um, Another one that I think these guys have listed multiple times, yeah. So again, they've been there since 2011, great. Uh, 1995 in the fall of last year, 1995 with an offer date this year, then increased it to 2195. So you can see the theme here. A lot of these offer nights aren't working, and I've noted in Pick 5 we've had a couple of our own offer nights that uh, haven't worked. You know, it is what it is, but you've really got to strategize in this market. There's a lot of inventory coming out. So I like the look of this one. This one was built in 1920. Definitely a different look, Edwardian era here. And inside, Again, original, 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 but modern furniture, more modern design, a really great combination of original finitures, finitures, that's not a word, original features and characters. I did put that together, it sounded good in my head. Um, so a little bit smaller in terms of footprint, right? It's a little narrower, but again, this kitchen here, this, if I was looking at it, I would think, okay, this feels like a lee side kitchen from 2010 right? It's, it's Ronsi. So the galley one that we just looked at, it was super, super modern, but it worked to each their own, I suppose, right? A lot of really different styles we're seeing in all of these houses today. Like, again, look at this here. This to me does not really look and feel like a Ronsi's house, but I think, and again, like, see this? Now I'm just kind of nitpicking. I don't love that. These hood fans are I'm not going there. Okay. I'm not going there. I turn my hood fan on and my dog starts barking. So again, what do I know? So bedroom sizes upstairs are decent, right? Originally in 1920, we didn't have any closets. We just threw our clothes on the floor. Fine, right? Some really weird artwork throughout this one. And again, I'm kind of questioning some of the finishes, but right, probably gutted in 2011. This was the style at the time. And then you've got the top floor, which a lot of these houses, this was just like empty attic space for some of these folks. So not much you can do with this. They put a chair and a rug, that's fine. Um, I like this, honestly, this is a great house. It's just, um, you know, like a lot of the other housing stock, they're back and forth between price points. And then you've got this basement apartment again. So I don't think the basement apartment holds it back necessarily. I just personally, if I was buying a house in Ronsi's, I would want a deep dugout basement with a rec room 
maybe room for a home gym, hopefully someone underpinned it, that probably only costs $150,000. I don't love these basement apartments, but I sold a place on Joffrey, Jeffrey, and it had a basement apartment, and the clients that I sold it to, they're renting it out, they like it, they're getting cash money every single month, help them pay the mortgage. This is actually a really nice basement apartment. No, that's not an oxymoron. Look, they have their own laundry. You're pretty spoiled when you're in a basement apartment and you've got this massive, massive washer and dryer. Okay. Yeah, I like this one. Um, I wasn't knocking the finishes right on the main floor. It's just, you set expectations pretty high and then you look at a weird, you know, non-selling, I don't wanna call it a crazy house, the one in McDonnell, it's just certainly unique. I just love this look from the outside, right? So where is this house on Wright Avenue? Okay, same kind of idea. You're only a few houses in, you're three in from Ronsi's. Would you rather be down here a little bit? Maybe, again, you have the school over here. So where are we, down here? Would you rather be further away or would you rather be like one house in? So I think this is three in, that's good enough for me. You can see from the feature photo here, obviously, right? Houses here, houses here. You're not abutting the restaurant next door. I personally think fine. Like, yes, you're gonna have people parking their cars there that are going on to Ronsi, so you're not gonna get a lot of street parking. But what does it say about a house and an area like Ronsi's where you can literally walk 30 feet and get your morning cup of coffee? Yeah, so I like this one. Again, it's been relisted and, um, you know, 150 foot lot, amazing. You're not gonna find that in Ronsi's. But I think the theme here, guys, with all of these is there's a lot of features with these houses you're not gonna find anywhere else. So you can get Edwardian and Victorian homes in other areas for sure. Friday, I'm actually going out with a client. I'm looking at a place on Euclid that's been on the market since last fall. And we're gonna look at a couple other Victorians. He's all set on Victorian houses. So we're kind of in the annex. We're in Little Italy. We're in Palmerston. We're in and around there. Of course, you can go and find these types of houses in Cabbage Town. But specifically in Ronsi's, most of this housing stock was built between, let's say, 1890 and 1925. Of of course, there's some infill houses and some new builds that look, you know, stuck out like a sore thumb on a lot of these streetscapes. But people buy in Ronsi's because they like these housing styles. And every one of them, you know, different hodgepodge or fusion, a better word, of various renovations over the years, as we've seen with some of these. Um, but you start with 65 for Mana, and that is an absolute A plus green light special for an entry level home in Ronsi's. Checks all the boxes. You move in, you're there for eight to 10 years. You buy up into something like, you know, the detached house that maybe Chris and I have coming out. Anyways, guys, that is it. It is a busy week, so I have to get moving. We brought out four listings this week, three more next week, zero last week because of the long weekend, but four more, um, actually five. Um, so it's been a crazy May, absolutely nuts, but that's the theme. I continue to talk about the amount of inventory and we are no different. I'm not bragging about the amount of listings. I am telling you that it is very, very busy with listings. If you're a buyer, that's great. It means choice. If you're a seller, that means make sure you have your pricing and listing strategy ironed out before you go to market. So on to bigger and better. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Please remember to like, comment, or subscribe, and we'll see you next week. Bye for now. Oh wait, one more thing. Please remember to check out The Last Honest Realtor, our new podcast, new episodes every Friday, starting the month of May.